Hey, John Dillon here from visualbroccoli.com, and I'm very excited to present our very first PowerPoint makeover. In this session, we're going to go ahead and take a presentation that I had actually helped uh, in, a, in a somewhat limited way, just other than some graphics, originally over a year ago. Now we're looking at kind of remaking it for some upcoming presentations in the next year at larger venues. So we're taking a second look at it based on the experience and what would I do with it now to make it even more visually appealing to the audience. And quite frankly, it was a pretty good presentation right out of the, the bat, but let's, here's some of my suggestions. Here's the original title slide. And this has your traditional PowerPoint look to it. And I'm trying to now more so than ever, trying to break the PowerPoint traditional template mode because nothing looks like PowerPoint more than a PowerPoint template as your basis. They're easy, but they also is what everybody else is using. So here's what I did. I created our background using Photoshop and the fonts become more of a graphical part of the presentation versus just text sitting up there. And also I believe very firmly in this, that if you're doing a lot of presentations, your title slide it's going to get probably the most airtime than any other slide because it's going to sit up there as you're preparing to start your presentation. So spend some time on it. And fonts can play a very important role in the visual elements of your presentation. Now, all the fonts on here are Arial on this slide. And you notice, here's the breakdown of it. And everything's Arial, but there are some slight different variations using bold and italicized. Uh, and different font size. If you look at the names down below, we see the Sergeant Joe Friday. We basically have different variations of Ariel. So we have the Sergeant, which is at 14 points. We have the first and the last name. It's at 18 points. And then I even changed the, the font style for the first and last name. This is something you typically see on movies, posters, as well as credits. So that's really kind of where I got that idea from. Let's go ahead and jump into the builder of PowerPoint and see how we did some of the other slides as well. All right, let's go ahead and grab another slide here from the presentation. As you can see, this is fairly clean. We don't have, a, it's not a lot of bullet points, not a lot of text, and we have our image over here. But one of the common problems you see and I see in PowerPoints is a lot of redundancy. And if I needed to, and this is kind of nitpicky, but I would go ahead and let's say we got securing the suspect, securing the revolver, we're kind of repeating the same thing. So what I decided to do here is actually break these into three separate slides. And personally, medical treatment didn't quite fit into securing the crime scene. Now, the presenter may feel otherwise and may choose, but this is kind of my perspective. So what I decided to do here was, is I came here, came up with a kind of a, a kind of a subtitle slide to talk about securing the crime scene. Because if you recall, he had a lot of things to talk about in addition to the bullet points. So now we can talk about those points, and then we get to securing the suspect, simply just brought in a set of handcuffs, which again, kind of visualizes what this means to the audience. And by the way, both these graphics were easy to do. I just grabbed them from the website, the World Wide Web, and easily cleaned out the white background. And the same with the revolver when I did this over a year ago, very simple. But now we've broken it up. Now the first reaction to a lot of people, and I had this reaction this week from another presenter said, well, gee, you're adding slides, isn't that bad? And I go, no, it's not really gonna add that much uh, size to your PowerPoint presentation. And the fact of the matter is, it's gonna be cleaner for your presenter. One thing I failed to mention too, as we go forward, this presentation is gonna be probably done in larger venues. So we need to kind of have the visuals kind of jump out so they're easier for people in the back of the room. The other thing is, let's make things easy. Yes, it takes a little extra time to set this up this, the first time. But I'm going to tell you, when I created this, once I, I was happy with this, all these slides were actually created from the original slide. And let me show you what I mean. So when I got down here, let's say, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the medical treatment. So I'm going to secure the revolver. And what I'm going to do here is just duplicate this slide. Come down here. Now I'm going to add medical treatment. And I may have to just adjust the text box just to here, get it all fit. And the gun is not appropriate medical treatment. Let's get an image that is. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab picture and slide down here, grab that. And it could be anything. 
I just happen to have an ambulance handy with our mythical city. And there we go. So all these slides were actually made from previous slides. So I like to, I get to get things pretty easy. Let's go ahead and grab another sample slide. And I'm gonna come back to this, uh, this slide in section two, but obviously lots of stuff going on and kind of using the concept of breaking things up so we don't have as much information on a slide. This is probably really leaning on what not to do. Um, I, was, I could have lived with what the previous slide, but this one is too much. We've got too many conflicting things. So what I did here was, is I created a new slide called Dynamic Scene. And that looks good, and we're gonna use this, and now uh, we're gonna go ahead and do a different type of bullet. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert text box, and I'm gonna go ahead and type some stuff. This is my first point. I'm gonna select it all. I did Control A or Command A to select all that. And I'm gonna go ahead and make it white and increase the font size. That's good, works for me. And I can even make it bigger if I want. And I'm gonna go ahead now and insert a line. And I'm just gonna do it over here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna right click on that line, go to format shape. And I want the weight to be 2.75. I want the line color to be this gold. And I'm gonna add a drop shadow. I'm gonna use the preset and offset center works for me. Now I'm gonna bring that down here and put it right in front of the T. And maybe just a smidgen over to the left. And I'm using the arrow keys. So now that's my bullet point. Now I'm gonna group them. And to group them, I can either mark key around them and make sure both are selected or simply hit the shift key, hold it down and select the images you wanna group. And you can have more than two. Right click, group, and that's it. Now, if I wanna put these in a bullet point and animate them, I can simply just copy and paste or I'm holding down the control key or command key on the Mac and dragging and I can duplicate. So that's how I made that bullet point. Now, originally when I was remaking this, this is what I did. And it's kind of funny, you get into this just kind of habit. It's like I get my six or seven bullet points all sitting here. So what happens is, is one's gonna come up at a time. In fact, let me show you here. In, uh, in presentation mode. So if you look here, it's gonna have nice and flow. I can talk about this point, go to my next point, go to the next point, and go to the next point. Very simple, very clean, but here's the problem. Let's go ahead and escape out of this, go back to PowerPoint. The problem with this is, is that, first of all, it takes quite a bit of time to set up, and then if I need to edit something, I have to move all of this to get at what, what I want to edit. A simpler way of doing this is this. Create your slide. You get happy with it. In fact, I don't have to do any animation whatsoever with this. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate this slide. And now I'm gonna put in here, here's my second point. And then I'm gonna come up here, right click again and duplicate. And this is my third point. Now, oops. If we go back into presentation mode, so here's my first point. In fact, I could have kept this one slide blank, then added this, so then this wouldn't have came up until I clicked on the mouse. So this is my first point, here's my second point, and here's my third point, and so on and so forth. The point of this is this. The fact of the matter is, yes, I added more slides, but to the end user, it doesn't look like more slides. And this is much easier to manage than trying to take all these animations, sit them on top of each other on one slide. Truly, it's not about how many slides you have. It's how you use the content and manage your time. And yeah, I've seen people have 80 slides in a PowerPoint presentation and they're all full of stuff. It's like, there's no way you can do that in an hour. But in this situation, we're kind of minimizing points to a single slide. I'm not saying you can't have three or four points to a slide. I'm just This is just an option for you to look at, and it's just a way to declutter your PowerPoint. Well, that's gonna be the end of our part one. Come join us in part two, and we're gonna talk more about some image management and how we can declutter this presentation. Well, until the next time, I hope we always find unique ways to make your presentation 
more editable. Take care.